Good morning, Woodside Village Church. Good morning, welcome to church. Welcome, welcome. Let's all rise for some of us who are able to. You don't have to, but if you're able to, let's rise in the church. Welcome to church, let's rise. Let's rise, thank you. Do our morning prayer. Thank you, team. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this beautiful campus. We thank you for this beautiful weather and the fact that we are able to get up this morning and come to church. Lord, your word said that we should not take lightly the gathering of the saints. And so as we gather this morning in gratitude to everything that you have done for us and in all that you have been for us today, we want to thank you for this Sunday. And Lord, I pray that you take it from here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to church, Woodside Village Church. Welcome, welcome. You shall pass the peace to the person next to you. You can give them a high five if you join us online. We are having a growing family online. Some people are dialing in from Canada, all over the world. So we thank you for being here. Pass out the peace. We're happy you're in church as you join our worship team in our gathering song this morning. Yeah. Lord, you are good. You are so good.
so good. We do not praise God because of what's going on in our life. Sometimes we do, but we praise him for how good he is because he is God. So I don't know how your week started, how your day started. Maybe you came to church for a quiet time and now you got a loud girl talking to you, but we're going to praise him because he is good. Amen. Amen. Exactly. And so we're going to go into uh, our other song with the team. If it's your first time here, my name is Evelyn Kaomian. I'm a minister in this church. We're a Thai little family, but we're together. Amen. Woodside Village Church. Amen. We are together. And our lead pastor here is Pastor Ama Zenab, and she is out of town at a conference right now praying over us, blessing us from there. And so we welcome you as we go into our next song. Thank you.
here for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. And we are going to take a moment to recognize the goodness of God that it is in our children's ministry in this church. As it is growing, as our kids are getting to spend time in an environment that really plants the seed of the gospel as they grow. Amen. So let me invite all the children up together with our leader from our children ministry, Christina. And Christina is assisted by one of my nieces today because Joseph is playing basketball. So when you see him next week, you want to ask him all the questions that are basketball related. Amen. Amen. Okay, wow. If, if I had known, I would have dressed for the occasion. Yes, you guys look good. So I have a question for you today. You guys know this. You get up, I'm going to ask you a question, right? And you actually get to teach the grown-ups. This is your hour to teach them. Amen? So can we, can we do that together today? All right, so I have a question for you. When you want to know somebody, right, like... Let's say I just met Novak. I, I haven't just met Novak, but I just met him. I just met you. I just met you. And we want to get to know each other, right? What are some of the good... Hi, my love. How are you today? Good. Okay. So if you want to get to know her or know how she's feeling today, what are some of the good questions that you can ask? Okay. How are you doing? Oh, that's a good question. How are you doing? It's a good one. It's also also a loaded one, right? You never know, like, if someone's just going to cry. Anyway, so that's a good question. You always should ask people, how are you doing? What are some of the questions you can ask? Mm. Okay. How are you feeling? Oh, that's, oh my God, that's, that's a good one. Like, checking in, right? What are your feelings today? Sometimes we have big feelings. Sometimes we have small feelings. What else can we ask somebody just to get to know them? What are some of the good questions? Oh, hey, here. What's your name? Oh, that's a good one. What's your name? Right? What is your name? So for us to get to really know someone, the good thing to do is to ask questions. Because how else will we know what is your name? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Right? Where do you live? Right? So the interesting thing is God actually invites us to do that. God wants us to get to know him better every day. So he invites us to ask him questions. Right? Isn't that what you do like to mommy and daddy when you don't know something? I, I feel for parents with the car rides, it's so good. The questions are incredible. Amen? And so I want you to join me into prayer today, right? As we pray to God as a nice reminder that he is inviting us, not just to ask each other questions, not just to ask mom and dad questions to know better, but to ask him questions to get to know him better. Amen? All right, so you're going to repeat after me. Okay, grown-ups, you can close your eyes. Join us in prayer. Say, dear Lord, we thank you that you allowed us to ask questions. In Jesus' name, amen. So every time you have questions... Right? You can go to the Lord and say, Dear Lord, I thank you that you allowed me to ask questions. And you can ask him these questions directly. Amen? Amen. All right. So now I'm going to invite you to go with Miss Maya and Miss Christina. You guys have a good, good day. Thank you so much. Ooh. I'm starting to feel what Pastor Emma feels when she sits down here. It's like you got to get the dress together and you got to get the getting up together. Amen? So every time we gather, we have this opportunity to give into the ministry, into the house of God, into what God's doing in Woodside Village and around the world. Did you guys all know that your generosity makes it possible not just to run the operation of Woodside Village, but also to extend what Christ has called us to do into our community right around here and into communities around the world. And so that's what really this invitation is. It's an invitation to partake. Right? Um, my nieces are here visiting me from England. Nobody knows what they're saying, including myself. 
According to them, I speak American, so we're good. They speak English, I speak American. And we were in the ride yesterday, and my niece asked me this wonderful question. She goes, can I ask you an honest question? I'm like, you know when a 15-year-old says, can I ask you an honest question? You're like just sweating inside, but you're looking cool, right? I'm like, oh my God, where's this gonna go? And she's like, are you rich? I'm all, okay, all dep- right? Anyway, so I, I proceed to ask her, like, why would you think that way? And it's her relationship with me as an auntie, right, that can just kind of show up sometimes when she needs it and just kind of meet a need. And so apparently this is done in such a joyful way that makes my nieces and nephew believe that I have an Costco kind, you know, like an uh, never finishing kind of resources in the back. And that got me thinking, when we hear about cheerful giver, I just feel like that's what God is inviting us to do every time we're invited in partaking in the giving. Like whatever that could be, in church, in a ministry, in somebody's ministry, you know, helping the homeless, whatever that could be, every time we're invited, we're invited to give in a way that doesn't reflect our source, even though our source is God, but it also reflects this cheerfulness that made those that are receiving our love, that are receiving our gift, just kind of feel like, wow, they have the love of Christ. They're giving me a smile. They're giving me a resource. They're giving me a place to stay. Whatever it is, the capacity that you're called to give and into, right? You give in a way that makes the person in front of you, that makes the recipient feel like your source is ever ending because that's what the truth is. God is our source and he gave abundantly. Can somebody say amen? So as we go into the next song, this is what we're inviting you to do, to join us and be the church. Amen. So if you're new, that's fine. We have QR codes. You can scan, you can donate as the ushers go around. Let's praise the Lord together.
as if you're receiving his presence this morning if you're receiving a special blessing from him this morning you know in Christianity we're called for more dependency we're called to lean fully on God and oftentimes it's a hard thing to do but something happens when we rise up on our feet and we declare words like let his blessing be upon my life let it be upon my family let it be upon not just this generation but the next generation and as we rise up together to worship something just happens sometimes we've had full weeks if you're human if you live in this area you know that life is not that easy I get it the rest of the world have bigger problems but we too have things that we are struggling with on a daily basis but when we come to church let it be this moment where we're inviting the Holy Spirit to fully just seize us in this moment that we have to just be here and so I would invite you this morning to join the worship crew as we worship together and just sing that may his presence the presence of the Holy Spirit to be here because see he wants to fill us this morning for a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and Yeah. 
Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that you are for us, that you are not against us, that you are for us. This morning, we gave you this place, we gave you this church. Would you feel it? Holy Spirit, I pray right now, I just offer myself as an empty vessel. Would you feel me this morning? Because one thing is that you're more interested in is to feel us as individual in a relationship with you. And so as we repeat, amen, let it be so. We pray this morning, Lord, that every single person here is presented to you, Holy Spirit, that you will not just feel this space, but you will feel each and every one of us. That you will not just feel this moment, but there's something in us there's something about us that you are looking to fill we offer ourselves today let it be the day that it happens let it be so that we are not going to check church off the box but we are going to have you in it that we are going to welcome you in it and we say amen to your presence we say amen to the word that you are about to preach we say amen to all the things during the week that we have not said amen to let it be so can you give me one more amen? for our worship team. Can you guys just help me give a welcome to Wesley? If you are wondering thank if you. I... Thank you. God bless you, Wesley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wesley, I promise you they're all thinking I finally brought in my worship person. Like, they are totally thinking that, right? But Wesley was with the church, and he traveled, and he is back. And so we're going to have him every now and again. So we thank you. And, of course, you ladies are, as always, a blessing to have you. Amen. Thank you, you guys. Let's, let's just thank our worship team. You all know they're a blessing to the church, but they're a blessing to me particularly. If you've ever heard me sing, you just amen to them. Amen. <laughs> amen. As you stay. Sandy, I'm going to call Sandy up very quick. She'll use, Sandy, you can use uh, Karen's microphone. She's going to read to us. And I love that we're standing in reverence to the word of God. Amen. So it's not going to be long. Just stay with us for a minute. Let's hear the word of God. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 39 to 42. Listen for the word of God. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us. We are all here to learn. Would you speak to our hearts today? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Ooh, Woodside Village Church. This is good. They put a watch up there for me. This is just specially for me. Because uh, I was trained in Africa, as far as we do church over there, there's an hour to enter, there's no hour to get out. So you all know that, but there's a clock out there, I'm going to be mindful of that, amen? Amen, amen. amen. So welcome in. Um, my name is Evelyn. Again, it's a pleasure to be here and step in uh, for Pastor Rama and Pastor Charlie, too. It's summer, so our pastors are going to conferences, having a good time, getting filled. I always get excited when my lead pastor is somewhere getting filled. I'm like, what is he going to come back with? But that's just a me thing. All right. Amen. amen. So today, our title is Don't Take My Word For It. 
You know, any of you have been in a situation where somebody's like, you should take my word for it, right? That's what usually you say, like, take my word for it. You're like, mm, okay, if you've lived it, I'm done. At least that's how I sometimes live. Um, but very rarely would somebody be like, don't take my word for it. Usually that happens in restaurants, right? They're like, oh, that was good. You can go check it out. Or they're like, that was not so good. Amen? So... I'm sure we can all think about that one time where somebody was like, take my word for it. And I was thinking about this as I was preparing my notes. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of this interesting thing. So I'm a backpacker, right? I know I don't look it, but, you know, it's like when somebody says, I'm a runner, you're like, really? Um, That's me. I'm a backpacker. Uh, Anyway, so one place in this earth where one another take their own word for it is when you're up in the wilderness. Amen? Like... You can see that, too, when people are hiking, right? Somebody comes to you, they're like, that was a poison oak bush. Anyone going, let me go try it? No, you're like, I'll take your word for it. I'm just going around here, right? And in the back country, it gets even, like, very deep. You meet people, they're like, don't go there, you just don't go, right? So one time, my friend uh, Kristen and I were up in the the forest, and we did this seven-day ladies-only trip, and we're out there, you know. And on our way out, like just a little three miles before the parking lot, we see this little lake, right? So beautiful. We go in there. We put our gears down. And as Evelyn will, she just whip everything off. Guys, I haven't showered in seven days. And here's water, okay? So I'm like, I'm going to get in there. So I get in there. And, you know, and Christian's like, dude, it's been 15 minutes. I'm like, give me five more minutes. So we had this wonderful time. We get dressed up. We grab our gears. And as we're coming back to the trail, we see this gentleman coming this way, and he's heading toward the parking space. And, you know, when you're back there, you're very friendly, as you know. We're like, he's like, hey, we're like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, did you guys see the rattlesnake? We're like, what? He's like, yeah, you know, I just went down that river like 20 minutes ago, and there was this huge rattlesnake just hanging out there, and because I didn't want bike, uh, hikers to just, like, stress him, I just picked him up with my big stick, and I just throw him towards the tree, like the big tree. Guess where Evelyn's backpack was? And her whole outfit. And her whole set, right? And so my friend and I are looking at each other, and we're like, we're totally taking his word for it. At this point, we're deep in, right? So we're just like, are we just going to scream? And I'm thinking, is it anywhere in my outfit at this point? How, am I, how fast can I rip this thing off, right? And that's just how it works in life sometimes. Where somebody's like, they tell you something, you're like, boop, that's it, we're good. I remember just getting home that night and unpacking my bag. And I'm, I truly took his word for it. I'm like, at what point? Oh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, come down. And... Um, So many of us live like that about God. Yeah, this is this this one is not for the ones who are out there who don't know God. This is about us. If you got up this morning and you are dressed and you put your lipstick on, I put my lipstick on, and you came to church, it means that you have heard about God in one way, shape, or another. Even if it's this your first time, right? Like something got you to get here. So you've heard about God. So many of us have, and we are just taking the word of the people who told us. We're just taking, you know, we're taking their word for it. They say, God is good. We're like, "Eh, God is good, and then we go, right? They say, God heals. We're like, oh, well, God heals, right? And then we just, we, we just, we took their word for it. But today, I feel like the Holy Spirit is inviting us to take a look at a group of people, a very tiny group of people that get very overlooked. I don't want to say how many years I've been doing this so I don't age myself, but I'm literally, very recently, the Holy Spirit just started dealing with my heart. And it was so interesting. I received the instruction to dig in into this part of the world before I was even asked to preach today. You know the Holy Spirit's doing something good when you get that sermon three months in. Then somebody's like, would you come? You're like, oh, that what it was for. And this is one of those. And this group of people, they are overlooked all the time. And here's why they're overlooked. They're overlooked because they come right after a very powerful story that we all know. This story, it doesn't matter if you've been to Sunday school or not. I have not been, but I still know the story. The Samaritan woman. Anyone heard that story before? Can you all just by a show of hand? Anyone? 
Okay. The Samaritan women. Yeah, the Samaritan. Okay, all right, good. So we have a few people. Okay, if you haven't heard, you've been in church for 30 seconds, you're about to hear about this woman. So this woman, this is a very interesting story, right? And this Samaritan woman, she, Jesus meets her, actually. This is the part of the story I love in this story. And this is such an interesting story that everybody preached about it, and then we forget the group of people that we're about to talk about. But let me walk you through why people tend to forget this other group for a minute. I am not preaching about her at all today, but I'm going to just kind of tell you a little bit. So Jesus meets with her. I love that. He comes to us. right? He's like, oh, he meets with her. That's how the story starts. She is going to the well, and he goes there, and he meets with her. And they have a very interesting interaction. Jesus is the first to ask for something in this interaction. He asks her, give me a drink. Right? And this woman is like, oh, my God. Like, you're talking to me? I want you to just kind of imagine the, the context of this. We are in a culture and we're in an era where the simple fact for this woman to find herself with this man one-on-one, -on -one, it's no cool. Right? Okay, so there's that. All right, okay, good. And the fact that she's also a Samaritan woman, she comes from a place and a region and a group of people that Jesus should not be talking to. Isn't that good? Anyone here is like, uh, Jesus should not be talking to me. Like, I have, so, I, mm, I have an accent. Like, he should not be talking. We're good, right? So this is where she's at. And Jesus talks to her. He asks her something. And then she goes, how is this that you... Being a Jew, ask me for a drink. I'm a Samaritan woman. I do this all the time, by the way. Jesus is like, go here. I'm like, how is it that me? Like, come on, Jesus, right? Jesus is asking you. You're like, no, I'm just a mother of little children. Like, what are you? Like, this is so heavy, Jesus. Like, why? This is me every time. I know you're good. Like, Jesus asks you to do something. You get in the flight. You just go to do it. You're good. You guys are all good. This is just a me problem. We have all these preconceived notions, right? It could be from my age. I'm just too old to do this. I'm from a broken family. You know, I still have little children. Like, whatever it is. I'm just that woman who, who passes out the good morning thing at church. I can't do this. Like, Whatever it is, we are so quick to tell Jesus why it shouldn't be us. And that's what this woman is doing. This is part of the reason why this story is so, so, so interesting, right? She disqualifies herself like we do every single day. We can find something in our history, you know, or, or even in our present, right? Like, hey, I may have an addiction that makes me think that I am not worthy of the Savior of the world talking to me, right? I may have a condition that can make me think that I am not worthy of Jesus talking to me. She completely disqualifies herself. But Jesus, and, and it's not just that she's disqualifying herself based on what's on her heart. Another part of this church, of this verse, like she goes on and she says, For you Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Like there are actual cultural things that makes it not okay for this whole thing to be happening. And she's bringing it in, right? It's like, I come from a family where they were not worshiping Jesus. And then Jesus started talking to me. I'm like, what? You have no business talking to me. Like, we, like you are holy, right? You are God. Don't talk to me. And that is what she's doing. She's like, I come from an area where you should not be interacting with me. Yet, Jesus interacts with this woman. He interacts with her long enough for her story to take over what happens next. He interacts with her so much that, in fact, he reveals to her some of the things that are still relevant to you and I today. Isn't that something, right? The person 
that was not meant to be there is there enough that Jesus can plant a seed that you and me, you and I, however it's said in English, if you don't understand it, I can say it in French as well, we are still living in that. Amen? So I'm just wondering, you know, today we know that we can worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. He revealed it to this woman. Today we know that we don't have to be going to some chapel in some specific country or in some specific place. I know some of you could have got there very quick, but girl over here is not about to wake up every Sunday and just be like, we are going to bed. So you know what I mean? Like, the fact that this that we're doing right now is possible was revealed to this woman that was disqualified from the beginning. So if you're sitting here and there's something in your life that you're using every morning to disqualify yourself, if you're sitting here and you're thinking, this is not for me, this church thing is not for me, my generation says this is not cool, my family says, you know, my whatever it is that I'm doing makes it so that Jesus cannot talk to me, well, too bad for you. He can still talk to you. That's it. He can still talk to you. That's what we have here. She wasn't holy, right? Culture have told her. For some of us, it's something that is inside us. But for many of us, it could be something that culture told us. The church will never like people like you. You know that thing you're doing in the back there? The church doesn't like it. And now we are filtering our experience of Jesus through this lens. We are filtering. I wear high heels so I can never be preaching. It's good. When Jesus comes down, I'm going to take these high heels off. I'm going to run up and down this thing. No, I won't do that today. Don't worry. Don't worry. So I want you to go from Jesus wants nothing to do with me to he wants to reveal himself to me. That is so powerful, right? And this is what happens when Jesus meets this woman. And if you read this John 4, like from the beginning, it just starts there and it tells you all these things. And he meets her so powerfully that she runs. <laughs> Isn't that good? Anybody? Like Jesus met you. So, no, you guys are too excited about restaurants. Have you ever talked to a Californian about a good restaurant? Oh, my God. I'm like, I can't even afford that. Stop telling me about it. That's what, it, right? That's what she's doing. Like, it was so good. She has now become one of the first evangelists. She's like, I'm going to tell the world. I'm going to yelp about this. I'm going to write it on Google Review. I'm going to be on Facebook about it. I'm going to be on Instagram about it. Like, give me, I'm going to be on, on Snapchat. Let me, where else? Just show me. I'm going to be there. Because what this Jesus guy did was so good. I got to tell everyone. That's what she did. So she runs off and she goes and tells everyone. And everybody here today, we've heard about Jesus. I don't care if it's a podcast. I mean, you're sitting here. So now you're hearing about Jesus, right? Check that off the box. And then we read the book. Then we, we've all heard about it. But this group of folks that we're looking at today I love their attitude about this because, you see, they didn't just stand there and just hear about it from this excited woman who met Jesus, right, who, like, Jesus told her everything. The test today goes, and many Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the testimony of what the word, uh, okay, because of the word of the woman who testified, Many of us have heard once that Jesus is good. We've heard that Jesus heal, right? We heard that he can do all this amazing thing. This is this group of people. They heard, they believe. But what they did next, though, is what I want to invite you to spend your time in today. Because you see, we're in this series called Covenant. And we're learning about the God of Covenant. Amen? And this is important because when we talk about covenant, it's a word in and itself that, like, in this society that we're in right now, it's used very legalistically. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about covenant, like anytime I really hear about covenant is when you're either counseling married people or you're going, you know, I, I go to marriage like 
retreats too. The best time to study for an exam is before, so I'm doing that. Once I get in, I will know the answer. I can just call out, right? Amen. I can just call out those. Anyway, amen. So this is when we hear about covenant. Or in the religious setting. And so evidently when we hear this word, we're like, oh my God, this is so juridistic. But the thing about God is his covenant, he said it because he loves us. He wants to be with us. He wants to have an intimate relationship with us. And that's what makes this tiny group of people that we overlook in the Bible so interesting to me right now. This is my season, y'all. I don't know. If this is not for you, that's fine. I'm going to pack it and take it to go. And I'm going to be having dinner tonight just going through the book and just chewing on it. The fact that these people heard that there is a God of covenant, there is a Messiah, there's a God that could, like that's all this, all of the things that this woman is running and telling people, and they're believing, their heart is not even hardened, but they take it to the next step. Can somebody say amen? amen. They take it to the next step. Our text today said, they went to Jesus. <laughs> This is a part of the covenant that I love. They did not just stop at what the preacher said on Sunday that was good, what this one said, you know, Jesus healed, he healed that other. No, they went to him. They went to him. And it gets so powerful, this this area, because it says Jesus stayed. Oh, wait, he didn't just stay, guys. He stayed for two days. Look at your neighbor say, I have a good God. Look at your other neighbors, your second choice neighbor. So don't do that. No, we don't, no pettiness in church. Don't do that. Amen? And this is what this made group of people interesting to me. So if you've never read this part of the text, I invite you today to not just hear it here, but to go home and soak into it. The step of not just hearing about the covenant of God, the step of not just hearing that he is the one and only that can truly heal that part of your heart, the step of not just thinking, like, I don't care what it is, even if it's a negative, somebody have told you, if they knew you, they would never love you because that's how church people are. I want to invite you today to say, you know what, I'm going to take that to Jesus. Because that is what they did. And there's something about Jesus' life that this area can identify so well is the fact that that dude was busy. Right? We, we know busy well here. Nobody is getting shut down for any season. We are on 24-7 because we are in the Bay Area. Jesus was busy. Yet, he stayed for two days. Isn't that beautiful? I love the God that we have. He stayed for two days. And he taught them. And he invested time into building a relationship with them. And they had questions. I'm sure they had lots of questions. Because remember, this woman comes from a place where they're not allowed to worship in a certain way. So everything that Jesus was thinking and saying, and I'm the Messiah, it was so contrary to everything that they knew. So I can just imagine in that interaction, in that room, what sort of questions that they may have been asking. You think you got questions? (laughs) You think you got, I mean, we're in the world today. Churches stand for this. They don't like this other people. They don't. Like that. Jesus is like, come to me. Don't take their word for it. Don't take their word for it. And we living in a better era where we have the Holy Spirit. See, they have to go find Jesus in a person and spend two. You don't have to do that. Right here and right now, today, you can have that relationship with the God of covenant that is going to go beyond what Evelyn said, what Pastor Rama said, what the, the, the denomination said, what the other dude on YouTube said. You can find it out for yourself. And Jesus stopped. 
in the business, and he stayed, and he built, and he answered the question, no matter how difficult they were. He answered them to the point that when they were leaving, they told the women, they said, we have believed, we're good. What changed? The, the, they said they believed when they, they heard the first time, and now they're leaving, believing again. So nothing changed, but they say something beautiful. They say, we have believed, not because of what you have told us. You see the difference there? They're still believers, like you and Evelyn. They're still believers. But there's a difference here. It's no longer about what somebody else said. It's no longer about how my mother was Christian. It's no longer about how I grew up or didn't grow up in the church. Now I am testifying based on what I have heard. And that's what this group of folks did. And so today, I want us as a church to just pause right there as we're learning about this God of covenant and remember how good, how good he is, that he will take time. And so if you have questions, don't ask me. Just like we did with the kid, take it to him. I mean, in what, in what other places on this earth, in what other religion are we invited to directly go to the source with our questions, with our concerns, with our worries, we are, and just lay it out at his feet? Church, can I invite you to rise this morning as we wrap up? You see, in the book of Luke 24, there was a group of women. When you start towards verse 13, there was a group of men, sorry, that was, they were walking with Jesus. And the Bible says that they didn't know that they were walking with Jesus. Isn't that something? That you will walk with the Savior of this world. You will walk with the one who gave his life for you to enter into a relationship with you. That you will just walk with him. So many of us do that on a Sunday morning or when there's call for prayer. We're just walking with Jesus. And if you read this text, you will realize that they miss out on the moment. They didn't know that that was Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world. Oh, my God, how sad is that? That gives me chill. I don't want to be that person that just walks with the church, just walks with the religion, just walks with the whatever it is that the world is doing, but don't really get to know Christ. You see, David said in Psalm 30, 34, 8, he says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. You, for you to taste something, you got to go to it. For you to taste something, you got to touch it. For you to taste something, you have to have an experience with it. And this group of people did not stop at what this woman told them. They wanted to taste and see. And so today I'm going to invite you to close your eyes as we pray to God with a hungry heart. This is a message for those who have already believed so we're not asking you to come to know Christ today, but we want your heart to be hungry. The Holy Spirit is inviting us as a congregation to be hungry for him. Like this group of people who are like, we've heard, but we are going to the source. And so, Father, today, we want to pray as a church that we want to get close to you. Would you help us get close to you? We want to be connected with you. We want to hear from you. We want to experience you. Holy Spirit, do you, would, can you meet with us like Jesus met with the women at the well? Can you meet with our hearts today and speak something specific to us? Speak something timely to our situation, to our relationship with you. Heavenly Father, we present ourselves this morning so humbly as a congregation, as a church, that you will fill each and every one of us. 
so that we can have the full experience of you. We've heard that you bring joy, Abba Father. We, we've heard that you can heal. We've heard that you can answer. We heard that you can direct us through the situations that we're living. But right now we are asking that you will meet with us, that it will go from the point of hearing from somebody else to experiencing it from you directly. We ask this together as a congregation as we raise our voices and pray together the prayer that you have taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Father God, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, God, but deliver us from the evil one. Because to you, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, church. You may be seated. Every time we gather, we have the opportunity to partake into communion which is a different kind of worship, which is a place where Christ is calling us to gather together and to remember him. And we are called to remember what he did for us, but we're also called to remember that he said it is all finished. He took all at the cross. Whatever it is that we are struggling with on a daily basis, he took it that day. And so I want to invite Pastor Drew up here to help me this morning serve communion as we pray on the element. Thank you, Lord. This is powerful because it's something that Jesus himself partook in. Amen. Yeah, we don't often get to do something like Jesus himself did. And communion is that place, really. And so the Bible reminds us that he took the bread and he blessed it. And so, Lord, we bless the element of the bread today. And we thank you for giving your body for us. For everything that we are not, Lord, you stepped in with your body and you filled in the gap. And so as we take it today, Lord, we want to expose areas of our lives that are not full. And we say, Jesus, would you make it full? In Jesus' name. Yeah. And with that, Andrew's, uh, Pastor Drew is going to pray for the elements and I'm going to be pouring it. Let's pray together. You are so good. God, you have been good to us and you continue to be good. We thank you for your grace that continues to be poured out upon us. And we praise you for the communion elements that so beautifully illustrate your grace in our lives. We're reminded today that you're the one who serves us. We don't serve you first. You're the one who pursues us even though we do not pursue you. And you are the one that continues to feed us so that we can have power to overcome ourselves in this world. So today we come, Lord, with empty hands, recognizing it is your righteousness and not ours. So as we eat together your body and blood, we pray you will mysteriously fill us and nourish us and fill us with your life. Pour out your grace upon us. We come with empty hands. To you be all glory, honor, and power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so we invite you to come forth and lean if you want to partake into the meal of the Lord. Everyone's welcome. It's an inclusive table. So would you join us this morning as the worship team takes it away?
children's club, uh, Cubs club still happens every morning. Parents are very aware of that. And we have our Bible noontime, Bible study happening Tuesday noontime on the courtyard. So just find us there. Um, I call it where the cool kids gather. That's a good place to bring your questions as well. Yeah, it gets nice and sweaty in there because they're good questions that show up. And people bring good food to share too, so that's really cool. Um, we do have a main Bible study of the Gospel of John happening, and it's on Thursdays from 10.30 to, to noon, um, and it goes uh, July through August, and it's in the village courtyard if you uh, are interested in that. And we have been uh, gathering your data to see what you're interested in, to do small groups as we go into the fall. So please make sure um, you fill out the cards. I think they're yeah, in front of you. Thank you so much. Really. So fill that up so that we have your information, so that we're, we're creating a community that is important and that matters to you. Exactly. So uh, amen to that. I like being in a church that cares about what I want to be learning. I don't know about you, but amen. Amen. And if for all of our new time comers, we have a, f a few new time comers. It's summer. You know, people are visiting. We love you. We love you. We love you. And the way we want to show it to you is we have special mugs um, that the welcome team uh, will hand over to you. Please grab them. You can have coffee with us at the end right outside um, and get to know one another a little better. Or you can go to the, to the, to the um, hub and grab a nice cold or hot drink. Um, I told somebody this morning, you can grab a drink. She's like, what kind of drink is it? I'm like, oh, she's my kind of person. I like you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she goes, what kind of drink is that going to be? I'm like, oh, you know what? I wonder. So I'm going to be out there with you finding out what kind of drink that is. Um, that's all for me today. If you can stand up for the blessing before we leave, um, may you have a good week. And I want to send you off this week with this benediction. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Can somebody say amen at that? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop and hear your amen. Because amen is let it be so. So I don't know if you don't want to have a blessed week, but I'm going to cry amen to that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Go forth and have a blessed week, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for being here with me today. I appreciate you. See you next Sunday. Amen. Amen. amen.